Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to create this beautiful purpley, pinky, burgundy type of look. Perfect for the fall season. And I'm only going to use these two eyeshadow palettes. They are the Masquerade palette and the e.l.f. palette, the Matte for Matte. To start off, I put some powder under my eye area to catch any fallout from the eyeshadow palettes. And to set my eyeshadow primer, I'm going in with the e.l.f. Matte for Matte palette. And I'm going to mix these two shades right here and I'm just going to fluff that all over my lid all over where I place that eyeshadow primer and as always for eyeshadow primer I am using the wet n wild photo focus eyeshadow primer For my transition shade, I'm going back into the e.l.f. Matte for Matte and I'm going to use these two shades and I am going to mix those in my brush. So far, this Matte for Matte palette by e.l.f. has been performing well. It blends really easily and the colors are really nice and pigmented and they're also really soft and buttery when you put them on. So as of right now, I do recommend this eyeshadow palette. It has about 10 shades and they're all matte. This one, the matte for matte, it, this is the first matte for matte. And the colors are all cool tone brown. I've seen pictures of the matte for matte too and those are all more warm tone. You know, the reddish, oranges types of colors and they're also all matte. So whatever type of color scheme you like, I highly recommend this eyeshadow palette if you're out there looking for a basic everyday matte eyeshadow palette. And now we're going to jump straight into the color. So I'm going to grab the shade Zobo and this is a masquerade palette but Juba's place. And I'm going to place the shade Zobo all over the crease. So at first, I'm going to run the color very lightly all over the crease. And then I'm going to slowly build it up. But I am going to get to the point where the color is going to be more concentrated and I'm going to keep the high concentration on the outer corner part of my eye. As you can see, I'm blending most of it out here and once the brush has a little bit of product left, I'm dragging it into the inner corner and so that way the color is fading from darkest to lightest from the outer corner to the inner corner. And I'm combining windshield wiper motions and small circular, and small circular motions so that I can blend that. And now to create the cut crease, I'm going to put some concealer on the back of my hand and I'm going to pick it up with this brush. It's a flat concealer brush, I think, from Sonia Kashuk number 110 and I'm going to pick that up from my hand and apply it to the inner half of my lid. And the concealer that I'm using is a Maybelline New York Fit Me Concealer in the shade Medium.
and in order to create the shape I'm only following the shape of my eye so I'm kind of feeling my eyeball with the brush if that makes sense because I don't want to get too extravagant or too crazy with the actual shaping and I try to not move my eyelid or anything because I don't want the concealer to crease and then out here in the outer corner I'm just patting it down so that it blends into the eyeshadow but I'm not put I'm not applying any more concealer onto the actual eyelid and to set that I grabbed the first shade from the matte for matte eyeshadow palette and I'm just applying that all over the concealer and that will help prevent creasing And I am blending it in a little bit, but I'm going to go in and blend with Zobo after I apply the color to my lid. So I'll come back and keep blending. This is just so that I get the concealer really nice and set. So now for my lid, I'm going to grab the shade Calabar, I think it's called, from the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette and with my finger I'm going to apply it all over where I applied the concealer. Now with a pointed brush, I'm going to go back into the shade Zobo and I'm going to blend right work Zobo and Calabar meet. So I'm just going to apply that right on the tip of my brush. And for this process, I like to use a pointed pencil brush because I can get the colors to blend precisely where I want them to blend. If I were to use a big blending brush, it would mix both of the colors together and that's not necessarily what I want. I want the colors to be well blended, but I also like for there to be a difference between the pink and the, the whiny type of color that Galabar is. So using this brush helps me clean the blending and it helps create that difference between the shimmer and the matte and you don't have the shimmer fading into the matte. And sometimes the shimmer will fade away, so I'm just stamping the shimmer on where it faded a little bit, but it's not too bad. I'm going to try to add a little bit of depth to my outer corners using this shade. It's the third from the last shade in the Matte for Matte palette. And I'm going to try to do that with this fluffy blending brush, so hopefully it won't get too messy, but it will darken up the outer corner enough to where more dimension and depth is added. And I'm going to apply that little by little, I'm going to build up that color. And as you can see, I'm just stamping the color on. I'm not necessarily swirling and blending because I don't want to move the other colors around too much. Yeah, you can see the difference between this outer corner and this one. And it definitely looks a lot better with that chocolate brown added to the colors. 
Now to blend out the transition and the crease color a little bit more, I'm going to use this fourth shade from the Matte for Matte palette. And I'm also going to use that as my matte brow bone highlight. And I'm going to blend that all under my brow bone. And as you know, I'm also going to grab that same color and I'm going to apply it to the corner here to help clean up the eyeshadow. So I took off the extra powder I had under my eyes and I'm going to go in with the shade Zobo with that same pencil brush and run that on my lower lash line. And I'm not going to bring it all the way into my inner corner, so I'm going to stop it about right there before reaching that inner third. Because I'm going to bring my inner corner highlight out to the lower lash line right there so that the colors can meet. And my eye doesn't look too small because of the dark colors that I'm adding around it. And I do like to connect my lower lash line colors to the lid colors just so that they join together and the eye look looks more together because I've seen other eye looks where the lower lash line and the lid colors don't connect and I don't always like that look depending on the colors used but because I'm using the same colors for my lower lash line and my lid I'm just going to collect, collect it, connect it all and make it look more fluent. Is fluent the right word? For my inner corner highlight, I'm going to pick up the shade Giza and I'm going to apply that with my finger. So now I'm going to take a clean brush and I'm just going to blend that in. I'm going to use a Kat Von D Trooper eyeliner and I'm just going to keep that close to my lash line and I am not going to wing it out but we'll see what happens as I am applying it. And I'm going to tight line using the Essence Long Lasting Eye Pencil. And this eye pencil is in the shade Black Fever. Now I'm going to curl my lashes and I'm going to go in with the Monsieur Big Mascara by Lancome. For lips, I'm going to first line my lips using the liner by Colourpop in the shade Leather. Now to go over the lip liner, I'm going to use this ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip in the shade Dopey. And I do want to say that Dopey is a mauve pinky purple type of color, but because I put it on top of the deep 
purple lip pencil in the shade leather it looks a lot deeper so it made the lip pencil look like a really deep bermuded mauvey purpley type of color that is it for this video you guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial this tutorial like i said is very colorful because i like color but if you are a person that likes to be out there this is very easily a wearable look if you do not like to be so bold, you can just go ahead and wear a more colorful color less or a more neutral lip color, more of a nudie or nudie pink or maybe even a nudie mauve depending on what you're comfortable with to make it a more wearable look. I believe that this eye look or this makeup look in general is perfect for the upcoming holidays, especially Thanksgiving. So give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.